recording. Three, two. Hi, I'm Maggie, and welcome to Mrs. Calabash Cooks. Come into my kitchen. It's the time of year where the we we now start harvesting what we've grown in the garden, and um, today I'm going to do some pickled beet. Now this is a little bit different to how we do it in England, but uh, because it's sweeter. I made some last year for Derek and he said, I don't like that. So I'm now doing uh, the North American way. So I've got water. Um, when you measure, and that vinegar, I've got one and a half cups uh, of vinegar. Now, what, instead of just pouring your vinegar in, just actually get down to eye level and you can see if you've got the correct, uh, the correct amount. Now, I'm using red wine vinegar today, which is uh, a little bit extravagant. I like the colour. Because when you store beetroot, then, or beets, the colour can go. But you can use white vinegar, malt vinegar, uh, white wine, and I've just got some red wine vinegar. Sugar, a little sugar in there, and the spices. Now I've got cinnamon, bay, a little salt, mustard seeds, cloves. I've got my cloves and peppercorns. I'm going to put that onto the stove. Mix it in well. Make sure that you've got a non-reactive pan if you're using vinegar because the vinegar will react with some. I'm going back to the stove now. The vinegar will react with um, a non-reactive pan. So we need to bring this up to the boil and simmer for about five minutes. So whilst that's simmering and boiling, let's take out the jars. Now you see, I've got different size jars. We're going to try and fill the large jars first. These have been washed and sterilized in a warm oven. We have, it's better to have hot jars. I'm not quite sure how many jars it's going to make. So I sterilise plenty, like that. I don't think we're going to have any more than that. And I've got the lids draining and I've just wiped them with a piece of kitchen paper. I put the lids in a, in a saucepan, covered them with, uh, with water and just brought it up to the boil. Hung, just let it hang there for a minute or two and then drain. And that just sterilises the, the jar tops. My fingernails and hands are in a shocking state because I picked the beach yesterday and then just screwed the tops off and scrubbed them, put them in cold water, brought them up to the boil and simmered until they were cooked. Now, it depends, um, it depends how long you're cooking. I've got little beets, tiny beets, big beets, so it was a question of cooking for, you can see there, that's a big piece of beet, whoops, that's a big piece of beet. So just bring them up to the boil and you can tell they're nice and soft when they're cooked. Then I'd strain them, pour cold water or spray cold water on and before they get cold, just gently rub with your fingers and the skin comes away. Now, I used to do this commercially and one day I was tired, I'd had the beets all cooked and I didn't skin them. 
and I've had to get a knife and pare them. It doesn't rub off if you let them get cold overnight. I'm going back to the stove for a minute because uh, I can smell the vinegar. Let's see. There we are. Look, it's coming up to the boil. There we are. Now, I want that to simmer. Let's just make sure we've got a nice rolling boil. And I want that to simmer for oh, about five minutes. Let's just turn it down a little, like that. There we are. And we'll let that cook for five minutes. And I just cut the end of the beet away, like that. <coughs> the vinegar's getting to me. And just gently slice the beetroot. There we are. Now, we've got these different jars, so let's have a look. We'll put these in the jar. We want to pack the jars quite well without overpacking. Um, I've got a large piece of sliced beetroot here, so let's just cut it like that. There we are. That's one. I'm going to fill these large jars first. Now I'm using a plastic board so that I can scrub it and get rid of the beet juice. This is one thing when you do pickled beet. Just be careful that you don't drop it on a, a, nice, work, a nice white surface because it does stain. In fact, um, when we were doing commercial beets, we had to use, because if you if you don't keep them in a, a dark place, it's, um, they start to fade. And when you're in the store, when they're in the store on the shelf, they can, they can fade quite a lot. So we actually used to have to put beetroot juice, uh, sorry, beetroot powder, concentrated beetroot powder in. It's a natural colouring. And that just keeps the beets from um, fading while storing. So... These are going to be covered with, with the nice vinegar and labelled and kept, I need that one, kept for a few weeks and they'll be end of November, Christmas, perfect. And it's rather nice um, to make some beets and then just... Um, give them away as Christmas presents. Um, I can make more beets because uh, we've got plenty growing in the garden. I did actually do a few last week and I'll probably do a few more next week. So use the thinnings. I use the thinnings very often for this. You know, if they're packed tightly together, just use the thinnings. There. Let's push it down. So I've got, I've got uh, three big jars and one little jar. I'm going to just remove this. I've got water here. I might need that spoon again. And look at my hands. That's why I say just keep your hands washed because otherwise you end up like, look like in the old witch from the woods, everything is stained. It gets under the fingernails. Almost there for the time. Now I will use those for something else. I will put them back in the oven before I use them so that they're nice and warm. And so I've got four beetroot here and um, now you can, with the vinegar, you can strain the spices out. I like to keep the spices in. In fact, sometimes I just add a little more spice and then the, as they age, the beet, abs you know, it's a nice spicy beet. <coughs> it clears out the sinuses. <coughs> <coughs> 
<laughs> there we are. So we just fill this. Just make sure there's no air pockets. Doesn't take long to do. The longest part to do with this is actually boiling the beets and slicing them. I just want to make sure that we have enough vinegar in there. Use the handle of the spoon just to pull away from the edge and the beet will go in there. And eventually the mustard seeds and all the other bits and pieces will sink down to the bottom. That's a bay leaf. We have a nice piece of cinnamon here. So we'll put a piece of cinnamon in there, a piece of cinnamon in there, like that. And there's another piece of cinnamon. There we are. We're just going to wipe the rim of each jar so there's no vinegar on there. So we just wipe round the top like that. Now, because this is hot and I've got these snap it tops, as I put this on, like that, it's going to seal. And when you can tell when it's sealed because the, that is pulled down. And then I don't have to give these a water bath. I don't have to process in a water bath. And there we are. That is all there is to pickling beet. Now I'm going to let those cool. And when they're cool, I've got some labels that we're going to put on and I'll show you what they look like when they're cool. I can't, I can't label them whilst it's hot. So when they're cool, we'll put some labels on and we'll show you what they look like. So thank you very much for watching Mrs. Calabash Cooks and please enjoy experiment and bye and don't forget Friday Mrs. Calabash Cooks at 2 p.m. Okay thank you very much and I will see you and we do have a new website mrscalabashcooks.com where you can find all the recipes these recipes that I'm making will be on the site the tips so feel free to go on to visitscalabashcooks.com, you'll see different recipes, the shows that we've already done, and there's more information about Mrs. Calabash Cooks. So, bye.